are you always trying to turn me into you? Why can't you accept me for who I am? This is King of the Hill. Now, there's a reason we've chosen that clip to highlight instead of something more iconic and well-known to fans like Hank's favorite catchphrase. Hello there, I'm Hank Hill and I sell propane and propane accessories. Or Boomhauer's unintelligible ramblings. Out everywhere, man. I don't know if some nigga man would run out there. I don't know if he dick check man Jelly go. And that's because this clip perfectly encapsulates not only the best parts of the show itself, but perhaps the best father-son relationship in TV history. Hank and Bobby Hill. Yep. Yep. King of the Hill was created by TV legends Mike Judge and Greg Daniels. At the time, Judge was best known for his work on Beavis and Butthead, while Daniels had written for SNL as well as The Simpsons. Together, they would end up making a show that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with The Simpsons. That early success launched King of the Hill into sitcom stardom. Viewers grew to love the frank, often uncomfortable, and always hilarious portrayal of the average middle-class family in the fictional city of Arlen, Texas. I you, uh, family. You're not making this easy on me, boy. While there were many fan-favorite characters and story arcs, particular focus was placed on the patriarch, Hank Hill, and the relationship he had with his son, Bobby. Two drastically opposing forces, Hank and Bobby rarely saw eye to eye, and that usually resulted in one or both parties raising their voices, storming off or simply shutting down. But for the most part, they'd come around at the end of an episode to reconcile their differences in a meaningful way. Now, we've seen a lot of father-son relationships on TV over the years. It's a trope as old as entertainment itself. The disconnected dad doesn't know how to relate to his son with different interests. Hijinks ensue and usually end up spiraling into heated arguments or straight-up threats. Are you little? It's noticeably more of a problem in animation where fathers are permitted to commit acts of cartoonish physical violence. But it's there in live action, too. You know, we could call in a specialist to find my foot in your ass. Despite the pretty simple look and feel of the show, King of the Hill actually grappled with a lot of complex topics while it was still on the air. They took the bull by the horns, so to speak, and never shied away from addressing real-life social, political, and economic issues in open and obvious ways. One of those subjects, and a core component of King of the Hill, was the conflict that comes with generational divides. And there's no bigger divide than the one between Hank and Bobby. Hank is quiet, reserved, and steadfast in his beliefs. He is very rarely emotionally vulnerable and has difficulties expressing himself to those he loves. Because of his rough upbringing at the hands of his father, Colonel Cotton Hill, Hank is hard on himself, but he also expects his family, and especially his son, to hold themselves to the same standards of excellence he does. Bobby, on the other hand, is, well, he's Bobby. To catch a fish, you have to think like a fish. Hmm, I'm wet, and I don't even know it. <sighs> The boy ain't right after all. He's loud, charming, messy, self-assured, and loves to try new things that make his father very uncomfortable. Get in the truck, Bobby. We're gonna fix your problem for good. Ah. Oh. Go change your pants, son. Together, they made for quite an odd couple pairing for the entire run of the show. Yet somehow, they also complemented one another beautifully. In quite a few episodes, including the very first and the very last one of the series, Hank and Bobby struggled to relate to one another. In the pilot episode, viewers got to watch the incredibly awkward interactions between the Hills and a social worker who was dispatched to their house over a misunderstanding. After Hank tries to lecture Bobby on the importance of winning the baseball game he didn't even want to participate in, Bobby gets hit in the face by the ball and comes home with a black eye. The social worker believes Hank is the one that's actually responsible. His suspicions are further justified when he sees Hank storm aggressively into the house to yell at Bobby and throw a baseball across the room. The matter is eventually resolved, and the highlight is Hank's earnest attempt to praise his son and reiterate that he isn't a disappointment like Bobby thought he was. I love you no matter what you do there. Phew! Let's go get something to eat. Then there's the series finale, which sees Hank take Bobby to a steakhouse. Both parties fail to make conversation, reminding us once again that these two really have very little in common. But after Bobby shows an interest in identifying meat, Hank spends the rest of the episode supporting Bobby in his newfound talent and giving him the push he needs to win a competition. He even installs a second propane grill right next to his in order to demonstrate his commitment to his son and their bonding activity. Oh, you're just getting started, Bobby. You'll be grilling your whole life. Just like you. 
There were moments like these throughout the whole series. Sometimes they argued, sometimes they just didn't understand each other. Hank would inevitably slip into the same sort of persona his own father adopted, either by ridiculing his son, going cold, or enforcing house rules with a needlessly heavy hand. Soccer was invented by European ladies to keep them busy while their husbands did the cooking. Why do you have to hate what you don't understand? But equally as inevitably, Hank would step back from those moments and try to salvage them with a calmer head. Bobby, usually having learned a lesson about perseverance, healthy skepticism, or the general way of the world, would show up with love and forgiveness for his father. And for his part, Hank also learned a lot about his son. Bobby pushed Hank to be more open-minded and expand his worldview on topics he had never considered. He also embodied a lot of the qualities Hank wanted for himself. All of this was demonstrated through the father and son's interactions with one another. But bizarrely, the quality of Hank and Bobby's relationship is the most noticeable through the eyes of a third party, that of Hank's own father. Dad, I don't work at a gas station. I sell propane and propane accessories. Don't sass me, boy! You ain't too big for me to give you a licking. A cold and loveless war veteran, Cotton consistently berates his son through his childhood and even into adulthood. Believing he always knew best, he tried to do the same with his grandson. Sometimes that manifested in Cotton teaching Bobby sexist ideals or trying to break his spirit with actual torture. But no matter what Cotton threw at him, Bobby always bounced back. Often with the help of his father to guide him, Bobby would come out of those interactions better than before. He would have a firmer grasp of his sense of self. However, at the end of the day, the crotchety and irredeemably cruel Cotton did see something positive in Bobby. He saw something he unfortunately never instilled in Hank, the tenacity and bravery of a young man who was allowed to simply be himself. Cotton continued to mistreat his son up until he was on his literal deathbed. However, he did at least recognize Bobby's positive attributes as a partial success of Hank's parenting. Hell, if it's a contest on who's the better daddy, you win. I mean, you made Bobby. Hank's childhood shaped who he was as a man. Bobby's childhood would do the same. Knowing this, Hank really did try to come to his son with the compassion and understanding he was never afforded. That's a really sweet approach to a father-son relationship. But King of the Hill wasn't interested in maintaining a cheerful and optimistic tone all of the time. Where some other TV father-son relationships are used as nothing but punchline, Hank and Bobby felt like a realistic duo while still bringing the laughs. Mike Judge and Greg Daniels intentionally created a show that was steeped in conflict and focused heavily on that aforementioned generational divide. But King of the Hill showed us that conflict isn't always a bad thing. When it's approached with respect and love and a willingness to learn, conflict can make us more well-rounded people. Their disagreements fleshed them out as characters individually and as a duo. It provided a space for them and the audience to ruminate on the nature of those disagreements, to see both sides and to come to a compromise. That's what makes Hank and Bobby's relationship so special. While it wasn't always or ever easy, they respected, loved, and learned from each other. And they were better for it. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way through. If you're still here, make sure you click like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic so you don't miss out on our latest releases. And while you're here, be sure to let us know. Do you think Hank and Bobby have the best father-son relationship on TV? 